Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Season 8, Thoughts. There's a lot of bad to this season. So let's start with the good. And the pinnacle of good, other than white, in this season is of course the finale. Now, I try not to overuse certain powerful words as I feel they lose their impact if they get used excessively and or in situations where they do not apply. But the season finale, the series finale, I would describe as either perfect or as close to perfection as it could possibly get. It's just so good. It's probably the most complex episode of the entire series with, you know, time travel and things, you know, events correlating to each other and everything wrapped up so nicely. Those last, I guess, eight minutes of just covering the future are just spot on, you know, everyone has their destiny fulfilled. Everything works out for the good characters that, you know, they all get their dreams fulfilled. What could Leo be other than, you know, head of magic school, teaching, guiding the future of good magic? You know, Piper finally gets the restaurant. Phoebe embraces love fully. Paige, you know, gets more in touch with her inner white lighter. Even just the events leading up to the finale are really good, and it feels final, you know. it Even more so than the seventh season, where it was also quite dramatic. And that was also, you know, they thought that that was going to be the end. This very clearly is the end, and... You know, for a while, we actually sort of believed that it might end really badly. And the way that the inevitable battle between the ultimate power and the charmed ones, it's just really effective. You can really tell, you know, lines are drawn, Things are happening that, you know, there's going to be consequences to this. This is not just going to be swept under the rug. This is not going to be an easy battle. The, also in the finale, the, the family, you know, you can really tell. This is the first time that we see Chris and Wyatt, both grown up, and, you know, getting along. Last time we saw the two of them together, why it was evil. The relationship between them is just... We don't get to see very much of it, but it oozes sibling. You know, the, the entire sibling experience. You know, their sibling rivalry. They're kind of, you know, they're good friends, but still kind of... It, it just really gets that across really well, and that goes for the entire episode, the entire Hallowell line, you know, everyone is so very clearly family, you know, and we have, you know, people meeting up that kind of, you know, Patty and the father, whose name escapes me at the moment, meeting up again, that has happened before, but you know, it still adds something, and Grams, who doesn't love Grams? And who doesn't love their father, too? And I suppose that's about what I have to say about the finale. Other good things in the episode. It was the last one. It couldn't get that much worse than this, especially the early portions of this season are just dreadful. It just... I'll get to Billy. 
but let's just start with just the state of the charm ones. You know, I talked about in the Season 7 Thoughts video, this kind of, you know, what are they expecting to happen? They just abandon their destiny of being the charm ones, of fighting for good. So we have several episodes where I think about a fourth of the season actually passes before they're officially charmed ones again. I will grant that the whole Maya thing with the identity, you know, Piper's identity accidentally being that of a felon, that was kind of clever, interesting. You know, that episode, yeah. Other than the really bad writing in... Billy's dialogue, and yeah. Anyway, uh, before that, just the episodes where they aren't charmed ones, they tend to be really bad. I'm not sure it's... It, it's not only that they aren't the charmed ones still, it's... You know, there are other things. We have the Sex and the City rip-off episode. Okay, I am only a casual viewer of Sex and the City. Yes, I know. I watched Charm too, so what do you expect? I know they're chick shows. The puns of Sex and the City and the whole narration thing, the puns are actually clever, which the ones in the Charmed episode are not, and the narration has layers to it, or at least two, you know. it. it it talks about something specific where if you didn't have the visuals at the same time, you'd still get something out of it. But then with the added visuals, there's a kind of, you know, it has a ton of these tiny little, oh, haha, I see what you did there, clever moments. And the Charmed episode, again, does not. The narration is just obvious. There is one layer to it at the most. We have the... Alice in Wonderland episode, could it be more obvious that this episode was just written by someone who wanted Alice in Wonderland in Charmed? It, that sort of thing has happened before, but at least it was generally entertaining, you know, the comic book heroes episode, the wrestling episode. I'm not even into wrestling, but I could still kind of enjoy that episode, you know, just as... At least it embraced it fully, also, you know, it just, it had fun with it. The Alice in Wonderland episode, I guess the sequence with all the imagery from the book is supposed to be that, you know, embracing and just going nuts with this kind of thing. But it's just not that good, it's not that fun, and the effects are horrible. Dreadful, just some of the worst effects in the entire charm series, in spite of the fact that there's been eight years for the technology to improve. Just in general, the non-charmed ones, charmed episodes, are just really bad. And I guess that brings me ahead to Billy, who's supposed to take over for them, or at least that's hinted at. You know, so we have this extremely powerful witch who's never been heard of before, who also has this great destiny, and we're just kind of supposed to accept it. She's clearly added for TNA. You know, she's there to attract young male viewers. I guess that's a subtle hint to the, the three leads that, hey, you're not as young as you used to be. It's so see-through, and the character isn't even all that interesting. Granted, she can sometimes be charming. I will totally admit that. And I don't have a problem with Kayla Kuoko, if that's how you pronounce her name, at all. I like her in Eight Simple Rules. But it in, in Eight Simple Rules, she was supposed to be kind of this obnoxious, you know, bratty gets everything she wants, and that was supposed to be funny. Here we're supposed to more sympathize with her, and she's essentially playing the same character. And when she tries to go beyond, her acting is not that good. She can pull off the attitude, she can pull off being bratty, but the less said about her crying, the better, for example. Just, she's not that compelling of an actress, and 
she's supposed to be this big. It's, at times, it's the same issue as with someone like Wesley in TNG, you know. You just, we tend to hate this young character who does this stuff that's better than the, you know, older, more experienced characters. It just, it doesn't tend to work. They're just annoying. Do not get me started on scrying with a GPS. No. In general, what is with science and magic merging in this season? We also suddenly have this kind of, you know, oh, magic sometimes skips a generation. What, like, you know, DNA with, you know, recessive genes? Okay, the whole idea of magic being passed down, I suppose, is vaguely genetic in its idea, but that idea was around long before genetics were, you know, I guess, discovered. You know, the idea of something inherent being passed down. But the moment you're skipping generations, I would argue we're going into actual genetics. The... And also just her... Leather and black and, it, again, just so obvious TNA and... It's not that good of a disguise, if that's what it's supposed to be. It's sunglasses and a wig. That's all it is. Y you can't fool anyone with that, you know? And... Then we have the repeating of episode plots from earlier. You know, we have... Uh, I guess not the entire episode of Billy wearing the, the, the belt is rip off, but the whole thing with, oh, I went and did heroic stuff, that's right out of the comic book heroes episode. They even have the, you know, oh, I'm getting used to this blurring thing. That's almost verbatim what one of the sisters said in that episode. If they were running out of ideas, why didn't they just end it? And, you know, we have, that's also, you know, the Alice in Wonderland, oh, Fairy tales have been used before. Yes, and that was actually a good episode. That was a great episode. And now you're just gonna say, oh, hey, we just read Alice in Wonderland. We wanted to, to you know, do the visuals for it ourselves. You know, go watch one of the movies if you have the need to see it on film. Don't just half-ass your way through. Oh, and speaking of ass, Coop is such a jackass. I can't Stand the guy, and I've seen him in, I believe it was NCIS. He appears to just portray jackasses in general. I don't have a problem with the Cupid thing returning. Oh, and how lame is his teleportation with the little heart. Wow. Anyway. The Cupid we saw before was a nice guy. He was, you know, he was lovable. He was a little arrogant, maybe, and he could be a little pushy, but he was not this much of a jackass. And this one, he's just not that, you know, I get it. I'm a guy and I'm straight, but still, when I look at the various mates they've had over... Th lovers, partners, whatever, over the seasons, there are some that I could appreciate that women might fall for that guy, and there are some where I really can't. And Coop is just too much of a jackass, too much of just an arrogant jerk. What is with locking himself into... well, Telbring, whatever, into Phoebe's apartment. That is stalker behavior right there. And the whole thing with, oh, I will find you someone regardless, and then we have this obvious, straight out of half of the romantic comedies ever made of, I will fix you up with someone halfway without you knowing it, but I'm the one who loves you and they shouldn't be with you because it was my words. They have the Roxanne scene, you know, with him getting the words wrong, and she falls for it, and... And even the, you know... She confronts him and is like, you know, I'm in love with someone and I hadn't expected it, and he thinks it's her 
and he thinks it's him that she means, but then it's Michael instead, just... And Coop is barely even... He's not in enough episodes for this kind of thing to really... Yeah, I get that it's also, you know, oh, it was foretold that they would, you know, because why it spills the beans, hey, Uncle Coop! Love Chris' reaction to that. Didn't that go kind of horribly wrong last time it was foretold, you know, with Dex? That was... Same season, actually. He's not in enough episodes. How about when he approaches Wyatt, hey, I saw you with Henry with the cake. Yeah, never mind. It just... Henry. Let's get into Henry. I don't think there are enough episodes between him and Paige for it to warrant an engagement, much less a wedding. I believe they share maybe eight episodes together. That would account for, what, two months of knowing each other. Getting married after that short amount of time, you know, and they're talking about, oh, we have, or Paige is talking about all these problems that she has. You got married after two months. That might be part of it. You were barely dating, and then you just you know, went ahead and got married, you know, I, I believe there is usually a bit of, you know, you, you see if you work as a couple and then you consider marriage, you know, you don't just jump into it just like, my thoughts on it is they really badly wanted all three sisters to be married by the end of it. It's less strange with Phoebe, also partially because that is in the future. We see that in the last episode, and it's clearly future events. So we don't know exactly when that takes place. They might have been going on, you know, going out for a long time by then. It might have been a year or something. But Paige and Henry, it just... Yeah, and they really wanted to get into this kind of... You know, what happens when someone who's used to be single suddenly gets married. You know, she's really not the commitment type, you know. And they also, you know, they got rid of Leo, I guess, because of the... I believe because of the budget, you know. Until, you know, the Angel of Destiny flies in in her, you know, Dragon Ball and brings him back twice. The... You know, the, the ideas explored there with, you know, what happens when a single girl is suddenly married. Not too bad, but it's just still so forced, you know, so rushed. You know, why did they spend six episodes of the Charmed Ones not being the Charmed Ones and then rush through this whole marriage thing, you know? Why didn't she meet Henry earlier? Why didn't they have more of a relationship together. That Kate moment was actually kind of cute. It kind of should maybe have been Henry, you know, finding, you know, the Charmed One's father and, you know, connecting with Wyatt there. Now, gotta talk Dex. Other than the fact that Phoebe probably should have him tested because he was with Samantha, He's not that interesting of a character, and the whole... Seriously, a pregnancy scare? Is that what Charmed has been reduced to now? A pregnancy scare. That is just... No. And that whole thing of, you know, oh, you thought that it would come true, so it had to... You know, it came true, but then did it only come true because it was foretold? That's an interesting enough philosophical idea, but it's not handled all that well, and it just seems like they wanted to put in promos and have that premonition of, you know, the two of them are married, and oh, maybe Dex is the father, and that whole thing, and it's just so cheap, and it's below the series standards. I know this is maybe a nitpick, but what is with... I think this this is especially early on. All these demons 
episode after episode, they look exactly alike. The, the demon leader of each episode really looks alike. Like, even though they die for each episode, you know, it's like they cast really similar looking actors. I don't understand why. Like, for the first couple of episodes, there's a black guy who's one of the people in charge. Then we have this, I don't know, Latino maybe guy. For example, the Dogen is played by that type of guy, you know. Nice stealing the imagery of, you know, Phantom of the Opera, by the way. What is with the erasing of memories spell thing in that episode? Anyway, at first it seems to sort of work, but then it doesn't, and then she tries it again, and then it works, and it's just... I don't know, it just... seems strange. Oh, and now we have Billy to take over as, for Paige as, you know, the witch who screws everything up by being inexperienced and just taking too many chances. Now, the whole ultimate power thing. I guess they just really wanted a new kind of the you know, this great destiny for, you know, someone young because the whole you know, because it was, people realized it was going to be a while before Wyatt and Chris were, you know, grown up. So, yeah. The, the whole Christy thing, the plan itself is not bad. It was maybe a little unoriginal because it's exactly what, you know, was supposed to happen with Wyatt. So, you know, basically... They're taking that and they're saying, okay, you can't unmake this, you know. I do kind of like that, you know, this whole thing of indoctrination and someone good turned to evil and the fact that Christy does die at the end, that she isn't safe, she is too... You know, she's obsessed, really. She's obsessed with killing the Charmed One. She's obsessed with revenge. And someone like that, you know, they give her every chance to, you know, come back to the side of good. She chooses to attack them still. And also just this, from the moment that they are reunited, Billy and Christy, and from when Christy masters her powers, every time the two of them together attack someone, Christy makes the big fireball, and Billy uses telekinesis to throw it at someone, and then that last time she uses telekinesis to throw the fireball back at Christy. That was really clever and well thought out, I thought. minor detail, but isn't it kind of... When Christy first starts talking, she's essentially that character from the 50s movie who saw the attack, you know, they're coming, you know, it's just, yeah, and then they come and it's just demons, so, yeah, big whoop. I did like that the triad came back. I. And I'm glad that it wasn't the source, I guess they did also bring him back earlier in the episode. Really strange how him coming back was foiled just by the demon who brought him back. You know, they killed that androgynous demon, and that was it. That also kept the source. Anyway, the triad, you know, back, and through Domain, who's not Domain, they actually do you know, distort Christie's morality. And I, you know, I thought that was really good because that's all it really ever is. You know, good and evil are always up for debate, you know, and it depends on, you know, the eyes that see. So I like that Charmed actually did get into that some, although it maintained its black and white view with, yeah, and the, tr 
triad coming back and needing to be there also, you know, made sense as in delaying, you know, Christie's attack on the Charmed Ones again. You know, Domain couldn't do it by himself, so Domain and Christie, not using Billy's powers but using Coop's ring, went back and, you know, but the Charmed Ones killed the triad again and, yeah, killed Domain and both of him. I think Christy is pretty well cast and she does a better job acting than Billy. She's quite intense and intimidating, but at the same time, she can seem sweet and charming. You know, her face after you know she first, you know, uses her fire starter ability and you know, we have Quick thought. That's another thing that's so great about the finale. The way we see all these, all this magic that we've seen before used again. You know that it kind of it draws from earlier episodes. It doesn't rip them off like earlier in the season where they just bring back entire ideas. But they just hey, remember this ability? Well, here it is used for that. You know, Coop's time traveling ring and the Hollow other things. Anyway, the fire starter with, you know, Piper says, ask the fire starter, you know, what happened, and her face, she's just, she looks so innocent and so, oh, sorry, that was me. That's perfect, you know, that is really great acting on her part. And her intensity really does, you know, you, you can tell that she is at the end of the day, not going to be able to be pulled back. When she starts telling Billy about how the Charm Ones are the bad ones, you know, over time it dawns on the viewer. They, they do a good job of setting that up. She is not going to be saved. Christy is too far gone. It's been 15 years, 15 years of indoctrination, 15 years of no friends, only knowing demons, only knowing evil. She's too far gone. And I thought that was really good, and yet it is still at least supposed to be tragic. You know, we still don't care all that much about the, you know, the, the, the Wyatt arc was more tragic, I would definitely say. But at least they're trying, you know. I think Billy has more... You know, she doesn't quite deserve... You know, at at the ending, at, you know, the, the wrap-up in the finale, those last eight minutes, she is actually there, and it's like, oh, oh old friends. Old friend? You hardly know her. Okay, by then, she must have known her for, I don't know, five years, you know, with the ages of the two kids and all. But, or at least a couple of years. Anyway, still, it just... No, I don't think she's earned it, you know. It would be something else if it was a character who'd been around for several seasons. You know, I get this is the thing with, you know, they introduce a character and that character lasts an entire season. Maybe it's just also that she isn't... I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it, but... I just don't think she earns it. It is also just that from the moment she shows up, she's just super witch. You know, she does the Charm One's job almost as well as they do. And they had years of training and she's just, oh, I kinda stumbled on it. No, just no, you don't you don't get to just stumble on to magic and just master it right away. You know, or almost master it anyway. And just yeah. And some of the dialogue of the season is just dreadful. And, yeah. Leo as a mortal is not bad. And, you know, we get into some relatively interesting ideas. You know, I realized that he was mortal at the you know, near the end of the last season as well. But here they also get into some you know, problems. Of, and again, we, you know... They swap bodies again. You know, last time it was Wyatt, and that was much more fun and much more interesting. This time it's just 
they do it again, and that's it, you know. With that said, it's kind of funny to see Leo, you know, Brian Krause acting as Piper, you know, very effeminate and the whole, yeah, that was kind of fun. I suppose that covers pretty much everything. Again, minor nitpick, but in the episode where the entire magical community is turned against the witches, the leprechauns keep saying, keep referring to the sisters' nails. Okay, we get it. Could you please refer to some other? Just use one other aspect of just you know something you think is overly feminine or you know they're weak because they're women. We get that. That's what they're saying, but. They say nails like three times in that episode, and at least one of those could have been swapped for just something else, or or at least if they had referred to their nails by saying something else, like you know instead of oh I'm sure they're out to get their nails done, say oh they're having a pedicure or something, you know just yeah it bothers me. I suppose. That is about... I like seeing Sam again, you know, and the whole thing with, you know, he really is Paige's father, you know, and he didn't want to give her up and that whole thing. And that episode also does have some touching moments, you know, when you see the, the father who lost the... On the other hand, JD is... Yeah, didn't like him. Why can he dodge fireballs? <sighs> the thing with him, you know, managing... To, you know, he, he has this throat-grabbing, rendering someone unconscious ability because it's convenient. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think that is everything. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.